welcome to Hancock's VMware Half Hour. And welcome back to another episode of Hancock's VMware Half Hour. Well, if you've actually been following the latest of the last three videos that I've done, uh, where we have concentrated on updating our ESXi um, 8.0 U3 hosts in the lab uh, to 8.0 U3B, um, available from uh, the Broadcom portal, uh, build number 24280767. Uh, not to be confused with the uh, Broadcom release of ESXi 8.0D uh, for the 8.0.0 release track. Um, I have um, spoken to a number of clients this week and uh, there's been a couple of questions on Experts Exchange where people have actually thinking that that is the latest release based on the published date, which was published on the 7th of October 2024. And uh, they've been trying to update their host with that, and they've been getting error messages about uh, cannot downgrade hosts, and they've been a bit confused um, as to um, why um, Broadcom have released an 8.0D, um, which is 8.0.0D for the 8.0.0 release track. And... Um, in my, in my little news segment uh, this week um, that I'll publish shortly, um, I've got a, um, a note from Broadcom support as to what that's all about. Um, so if you've been watching the last uh, couple of videos that we did, the first video that we did was upgrading our ESXi host in, in the very traditional way of booting from um, an ISO. Uh, which when in our lab was actually booted from uh, a CD-ROM, so really a bit old-fashioned. Uh, but you could also use a USB drive or uh, SD card, um, or you could actually connect that ISO to a virtual session using ILO or IDRAC or, or BMC. Um, in the second video, um, we were going to do the... I was going to demonstrate to you the how to update um, ESXi uh, 8.0 U3 in this particular case in our lab direct from VMware using the dirty method. Uh, what I like to call the dirty method because I feel it's a little bit dirty really. Like normally we would actually use VLCM to do any of these updates. So this is just a revisit um, back to a couple of questions that was asked this week about updating uh, ESXi host. So I thought I'd sort of kind of go back and uh, we do one from an ISO, an upgrade. Uh, we would do one direct from VMware using the dirty method, and we would actually basically use one using the offline depot. Well, as it turned out, the dirty method direct from the internet didn't work, so we carried on, and we basically did the, the depot offline method. Um, so this video um, is going to be the dirty method. So we're going to update ESXi 8.0 U3 uh, to 8.0 U3B using the dirty method direct from the internet. So um, I've already got connections um, into our ESXi hosts. I've got two connections, two PuTTY sessions into the same ESXi host. Um, the reason I like to do this is because I like to tail um, the ESX update log so I can actually basically see what's going on. And then in the other session, um, I'm going to cut and paste the information that I need. And I will put these commands um, in the description for you um, so you can follow along. So the first command we're going to use is the ESX CLI uh, space network space firewall space rule set space set dash E true dash R HTTP client. And that basically just punches a hole through the firewall uh, on the ESXi host to allow us uh, to execute the next command, uh, which I'm looking at the next command, and I think I was going to cut and paste it, but I'm thinking, what on earth have I done for this command? Um, this doesn't look right at all. Had to adjust that command. I think I've got it right now. So we're going to use the command. It's quite a long one, this. Uh, ESX CLI software profile update dash P. Uh, now, I explained about profiles in the last video. 
Um, and somebody did actually ask me about this last week uh, as to where do you find the profiles? Um, you can either look at the release notes and you'll find the profiles there, um, or you can actually basically look, you can use the ES ESX CLI software profile uh, list to find the profiles available uh, to you. Um, so that's the profile that we're going to use, which is ESX i-8.0 u3b-2428067 dash standard uh, dash d uh, followed by the uh, host update url and the two commands i'm adding on the end um, are specifically here really dash dash no dash hardware i need to put a space in there as that's going to fail uh, so let's put a space dash dash no dash hardware dash warning and then that's specifically really for hardware that's not actually on the uh, vmware hcl uh, your update command will abort if you don't tag or append dash dash no hardware dash warning and then dash dash dry run and dash dash dry run is a bit like the what if command in powershell uh, it won't actually make any changes uh, but you will be able to see whether or not that any errors occur so I'm just going to hit enter in this session and we should start to see um, information scrolling up the scene in the log. Previously, when we did this, we were having an issues with it reaching out to um, Broadcoms, Cloudflare, um, CDN. Um, I think it's just one of those things, I think, at the moment, with changes that are going on across the Internet uh, with Broadcom and VMware. Um, so hopefully we're not going to see any error messages. And this basically is just going to uh, report um, everything is OK. And then we can execute the same command, but without using the, the dry run. Uh, so with that, I'm just going to bob off. I'm going to get my coffee and get my sparkling water, and I will be back when this finishes. Okay, so <clears throat> it would appear we found another bug. Um, and the, the reasoning for this uh, is that um, the memory required for the dirty method if you like um, the ability to download the update direct from the internet uh, which has to scroll through um, all the repo stuff which you sort of kind of see here has grown um, in 8.0 the ESX CLI memory limit um, has been capped at 300 megabytes which is not enough um, so there is a mechanism uh, and um, thanks to uh, William Lamb that's documented this on his website. Um, so I will uh, put this uh, link uh, in the description uh, so he can get the credit for it. Um, so I'm just going to run these commands blindly um, that he's actually basically put as to how we resolve this. That apparently the, the recommended solution is uh, use VLCM. Um, or use the depot um, method that we did in the last video. Um, but if you want to correct this problem, um, then you can use these commands. So I'm just going to cut and paste these commands um, into our session. And uh, hopefully um, we will see if uh, and we can see here by this command we're replacing uh, 500 uh, 500 meg uh, from 300 meg um, as I said normally I would use um, you VLCM um, so this is just really being done for consistency Okay, so we can try um, that link, link. We can try that command again. So I'm just going to hit enter again. 
<clears throat> we're only doing the dry run anyway. Uh, and this is what I was saying to you before about um, doing dry runs. You can see the potential changes that would be written or would occur if they didn't actually fail. So that last one was a dry run, uh, which actually picked up that we would have a memory error um, should uh, we have basically just executed a command without the dash dash dry run. So I'm hoping this time that we don't see this um, memory error. Um, so tell you what I'm going to do. Um, I'm actually I think it's just about to come to an end here. I think we may actually start to see the mounting and moving and downloading. Uh, I think we're going to possibly finish. Tell you what, I disappear. I'll disappear and I'll come back in a moment. Okay, so <clears throat> reboot required equals true. If we just scroll back and have a little look here, vibs removed, uh, vibs installed, although it does actually turn around and confirm again, dry run only, host not changed, the following installers will be applied. Um, so thank you, William. Um, again, um, that little fix seems to have uh, fixed our problem in the lab here. So I'm going to basically now run this with no dry run. So this is now going to update our host. And uh, we've already done the dry run, which completed with no errors. So we shouldn't see any issues this time when we actually basically complete it for real. Uh, so with that, I will actually disappear and speed this up in post. And that has completed successfully. Uh, reboot required true. And if we just scroll up, uh, vibs skipped and vibs removed and vibs installed and the update completed successfully. But the system needs to be rebooted for the changes to take effect. So I do exactly the same thing I did before. I'm going to exit these two sessions. I don't need them anymore. Uh, and I am lucky here. Um, in the lab uh, that we do have an ILO connection uh, so I can easily shut down and restart from an ILO session. Uh, you can do the same from uh, IDRAC or BMC. So this was the version that we were running was 2402510 and I'm going to just going to do a quick restart and hopefully <coughs> That will boot our new version of build 2428076.7, which is the latest version of ESXi uh, for 8.03 release track. Um, as I said, um, there have been a few people that have been uh, confused. Um, of late, um, that, that, as I said, Broadcom uh, have released uh, on the 7th of October um, an ESXi 8.00D. And as I say, there have been a few people that have actually tried to update it to that and have a little bit been a bit confused as to why the error message received is uh, you are trying to downgrade. Uh, your version of ESXi, and that is not supported. Um, so uh, let me just disappear.
uh, while this uh, boots the new version. And there we go, a successfully updated um, ESXi 8.03 host uh, to build 2428767. And hopefully I can still log in. Unhandled exception, that doesn't look good. I think that's generally Chrome uh, browser type issue. I think I've seen that before. I don't think there's anything to worry about. Uh, and if we just take the host out of maintenance mode and we are updated to 2428076. So that's it. Uh, and that concludes uh, this video. And it concludes this little series um, of updating our hosts uh, three separate ways without using DLC on. Um, again, uh, using an ISO um, old-fashioned boring method uh, writing an ISO to a CD-ROM um, uh, using the depot file um, as suggested uh, by um, Broadcom now um, if you're going to use the dirty method unless you made those changes um, as uh, written about by William Lamb and I will actually basically put his article in the description so once again thanks so much for watching uh, these videos um, if you have an idea for a video, then drop me a comment um, and uh, we'll see what uh, we can do. We did one last week for Erica. Uh, she wanted a uh, to see a um, command line upgrade of uh, VMware vCenter Server 8. Uh, so that's one that we actually did. Uh, so if you actually basically want to suggest a video for us to do, then drop us a note in the description. Uh, in the meantime, uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. Uh, if you're watching this on Experts Exchange, then please endorse. If you're watching this on YouTube, then please thumbs up and like. Uh, if you didn't like it, then don't like it. Um, and also subscribe as well. And uh, I will be back again uh, with uh, another few videos. Uh, so in the meantime, thank you very much. And uh, toodle pip. And thanks very much for watching uh, VMware Hancock's Half Hour. Thanks very much, Dan. Goodbye.